Hey everyone, it's Alex from Effigy Media. Today I'm going to show you how to align a beat to the grid so that editing can be done, mixing can be done properly. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. You're gonna do Shift Command I for import audio or Control Shift I if you are on Windows. I already have something that I have right here. And then we're just going to copy. If you hit Add, it is going to reference the file from the location it exists. So this is a beat that I've downloaded. It's in my downloads folder. If I was to hit add here, it would not bring it into the audio files folder. You can do new track if you want to make it a new track. Clip list, we'll put it in your clip list over here. Let's go ahead and do that just so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to bring that in. Here it is in my clips list here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new stereo audio track. And we're going to call this and now what you can do is you can just drag this over, boom, there we go. So how do we get this in line to the grid? Because if you listen to it, it is definitely not on grid. And that can be an issue later down the line when you want to edit things, if you want to loop a section, make the beat longer, you want to use this section for the hook so you can mess around with it. If when you want to do your time-based effects, like your delays and your reverbs, you want them to be synced to the host, which would be the tempo of the song. Up here in this window, you have bars, beats, minutes, seconds, time code, feet and frame samples. In order for the grid to be the proper grid, you need to make sure that this is bars and beats. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to enable keyboard focus mode, or otherwise known as quick keys. So this little button here that has a square with an A and Z, that's keyboard focus. Uh, that's just gonna make your hotkeys a little bit easier to do. So for example, if you wanna do a fade, it's F instead of command or control F, although command and control F will give you a bigger, better fade window. So we're gonna click that. And then now we can use R and T to zoom in and out. And now we're gonna tab to transient. Now, this right here, this button here is tab to transients. You must have this on, so it needs to be blue. So we're gonna zoom in. Uh, I'm actually gonna blow this up. So I'm gonna make that large. Now, you might be tempted to just eyeball it and you, know, you can zoom way in and click there but let's let the computer do the work for us, right? So we come up next to it, hit tab. It's gonna snap to the beginning of that transient. And then we're going to hit A, and it's A for both Windows and Mac. And we're gonna trim the beginning off. So we listen to it. It starts right on that downbeat, right on that kick. So we're gonna select it by double clicking it. And then we're gonna hit Y. It's gonna send it to the beginning of the session. I'm going to hit enter, put the playhead at the beginning of the session, and now this whole session just starts right on that downbeat. Cool, so that's what we want. Now, hopefully you have a numpad, so that's all the numbers that would be on the extended keyboard. So if your keyboard has all those extra numbers on the far right side, good for you. That's very helpful for Pro Tools. A lot of important functionality is off of that. Seven on the number pad will turn on and off the click. So if I hit seven on the numpad and then play, you don't hear the click anymore. Command numpad one will bring up the transport. You can also pull up the uh, transport by going to window and then transport here. You see how it says command one. But if you just click that, or you can bring up the transport all the same. I prefer command one just because I love hotkeys. We're going to click right here on this number. When we hit play, we can tap the T button to tap in the tempo. So it helps if you have good rhythm. And here we go. Okay, so I've tapped out 120 and uh, let's see if I'm right. Now you can see my markers here. Now it's best to go into grid mode. So if you hit F4, see how that switched to grid or you can just click up here. Slip allows you to click anywhere by the way and grid mode puts you right on the grid. Now you can control the resolution of your grid right here by clicking on this notation graphic. So if you want to show half note grid, there you go. So that's half notes. 
quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth, thirty seconds, and sixty fourths. So if you want eighth notes, boom, there you go. So each one of these is an eighth note according to what you've tapped out. Now that might not necessarily be accurate to the song. If you've tapped in half time, then a quarter note on this grid is going to be actually a half note in relation to the song itself. Um, you can generally tell what the song's tempo is by the speed of something like the hi-hat. So, tat, 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 tat. So right now, we have it set to eighth note. I was tapping quarter notes. So my grid is technically half as slow. It's still gonna work just fine. You just have to be careful with some things like in delays when you have quarter notes set, you're actually going to be doing half notes. So if you want the quarter note effect in your delays, you're going to want to put eighth notes. So I got it right on the first try, but let's say I didn't. Let's say I thought it was 119. Well, you can make sure it's right by listening to it with the click. So I'm gonna hit seven to turn the click back on. Okay, so you can hear it's off. Now, if you watch closely, you can see the transient slip before the grid line. So what that means is your grid is too slow, right? Because the grid came after the beat. And that's how you can tell that, oh, I need to make this faster. Let me try something faster. Let me try 121. All right, let me just listen to that. Uh-oh, my transient is now after the grid. That means my grid is too fast. So we can try something in the middle. 120, there you go. And then, you know, to make sure you get it right, I like to test all around. And I go. Just jump in later in the song. So you might do this and think you're right because uh, you're working with a double time number, which would make it more accurate in smaller numbers. So it'll stay on time for longer, but then slip out of time later in the song. That's why I always go ahead and check, you know, further down the song. If you see that it's slipping, you can try to find where it starts slipping more obviously, and then you can determine whether your grid is early or late, so do you need to make it faster or slower. Another quirk with this is sometimes I'm given MP3 files uh, because of how the data compression works, turning a lossless wave into an MP3, or especially if people are ripping files off of YouTube, it actually ends up being decimal points. So you might find like this 120 BPM song ripped from YouTube might be, you know, 119 point seven five and then you're just gonna have to play around with decimals it's a pain in the ass but it's just the sad truth uh, which is why I always prefer at the very least wave files ultimately I prefer track outs because then I have the freedom to mix the song itself before I actually deal with the vocals but you know it is what it is so 120 so we're not done yet so we can do command one to hide the grid uh, we know we're on time we can hit seven to turn off the click and then we're gonna double click this and we're gonna do command X or control X to cut. And we're gonna stay in grid mode and we're gonna just go randomly somewhere way far out. I'm gonna put my grid back to quarter notes. Okay, and then I am going to do F6 to do the trim tool. Make sure you have the trim tool that looks like this. If you press it too many times, you'll get this, which is going to time warp it. You don't want to do that. And if you get this, it's going to loop it. You don't want that either. It has to be this icon. And then you're going to pull that all the way out. There we go. I'm going to go F7 to go back to our selection tool. Uh, you can change these up here as well. If you click this one, you get a smart tool that changes based on where you are. Uh, I prefer to just hit the buttons I'm much faster that way so we're going to hit T a bunch to zoom in and you're gonna notice that it didn't actually go all the way out here so however this track was rendered 
you know, they didn't start at the grid. A lot more of the time I see it actually extend past and then I would press A to trim it to the left. Uh, but what we're going to do here, just to make sure that that's not an issue ever again, is we're going to hold shift and then double click that. So it's going to select the entire track, but also the little space that's missing. So I'm going to press shift option three, and that's going to consolidate it. So now it starts at that grid. I'm going to double click it again, command or control X to cut, and I'm going to come back here and put it at bar five. Now I always, always start all my tracks at bar five. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of times where it's like, oh, let's put something a little bit before the start of the song. Well, if you start your song there, you can't do that. So I always give myself some buffer space. All my sessions start at five. All right, so now we have the beat to the grid. Hey, what's up everybody? If you liked the video or you learned something, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thank you and until next time.